Hello, I'm back again. So I've been gone for about a week. Um, and then in the past week, we've done a bit of traveling and we went over to the Midwest, um, Pittsburgh, Ohio, uh, Washington, DC, and uh, just a few other places in between. And we went to go see the solar eclipse. It was on Monday, April 8th, just at the beginning of this week. And so, like I said, um, I just posted a video um, of a crowd reaction. Um, we went to the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum in Wapakoneta, Ohio, which is all the way over on the west side of Ohio, um, right off of I-75. Um, so the solar total solar eclipse path is kind of narrow. It's about 100 miles long, or wide. And we were originally planning to go to Waco, Texas. Um, I had had a hotel reservation that I had reserved in January of 2023, so over a year ago. So we were looking at the clouds and I was doing some checking the weather forecasts and about a week or so ago, we realized that Texas is most likely gonna get too many clouds and it was supposed to, they were expecting lots of rain, full cloud coverage and you know, driving from Arizona to Texas just wasn't going to work. Now, there's really no point in going there if we can't see what we're going to see. And so I started looking at some plane tickets and actually found a pretty good deal on some plane tickets to Washington, D.C. and flew back from Baltimore. And so grabbed those, flew all the way over there, uh, went to Washington, D.C. for a little bit last Friday. Uh, kind of just drove around, looked at the Capitol and some of the memorials, uh, the Washington Memorial and the Lincoln Memorial, did some walking. Spent some time, looked at the cherry blossoms, which were in bloom right now. Um, spring is starting, so everything's kind of starting to pop out just a little bit south there. And so we spent the day there and then ended up driving up to Pittsburgh. Um, got a relative there, so we stayed with them so we didn't have to pay for a, a terribly gouged uh, hotel prices because all the hotel prices over the past week have been super expensive. Um, sometimes one or two thousand dollars a night as much as that so all the air and b's were booked out for sunday night and it was just impossible so we found someone to stay with and stayed there for the week and then on monday we drove over to western ohio because we were going to go to erie pennsylvania and erie pennsylvania was only you know about two and a half or three hours north of where we were at and so that would have been really close um but Again, looking at the weather forecast, there was a rainstorm that was over uh, the front that was coming through. And it looked like that whole portion of Pennsylvania and even Niagara Falls was gonna to be too cloudy. So we made some decisions. The other possible choices were to go over to Ohio to the west or go east up to as far as Burlington, Vermont. Um, decided against going to Vermont. That was a nine hour drive from where we were um, also, just because the clouds were going in that direction and we didn't know exactly how fast they were going, so we thought it'd be better to get on the western side, side of the storm front. So we, at, at midnight, um, Monday morning, uh, we all got in the car, we drove four and a half hours to five, well, it was about five hours by the time we did some stops, and drove straight west to Lima, Ohio, or is it Lima? I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's L-I-M-A. And we'd, I'd been doing some looking on Facebook and looking for events and different get-togethers for people when they're doing the eclipse. And found out that the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum is located just south of there. Uh, checked the weather forecast. It looked like it was probably going to be okay. We ended up driving through the rain on the way there. And just as we got there, it was starting to clear up a bit. So we got in line. Um, Got a parking spot. We got there at 5:30 in the morning, and we finally was able to able to park in the parking lot around 7:45, 8 o'clock. And so we got our stuff out, got set up. Um, I set. I had a telescope that I took with me, a very small one. It's a, like a 90 millimeter. Um, it's like about a four inch. Uh, it's a very compact one. It was something I could put into a carry-on bag and carry on the airplane directly without having to ship it or put it in the cargo hold. So took that, had a tripod, um, some accessories like eyepieces and uh, a special uh, finders thing for the sun so that you know you wouldn't have to look through a finder to look right at the sun to aim the telescope. Um, and I had an electric 
or an electronic uh, digital uh, eyepiece that a camera that went over the end of my eyepiece and then I could uh, you know use that to broadcast images to an iPad or to my uh, iPhone so got that set up we spent all morning there we got to tour the museum it was pretty cool uh, we, they had a lot of people there they probably had more people than they had in the past 30 or 40 years or whatever it's been since it's open um, it's totally crowded but got through saw some of the exhibits they had the gemini capsule there from the smithsonian that uh, armstrong flew in and he had a bunch of other exhibits and had a moon rock and all kinds of cool stuff so we got out there and we stayed there I ended up getting a little sunburned. I don't know what some of the other people just like the felt faces got sunburned. I was wearing a kind of a hoodie because it was a little bit chilly in the morning. Uh, so I pretty much kept the sun off my arms. I'm pretty white, so I burned super fast. So, but yeah, anyway, we were there. The eclipse started around 1.50 in the afternoon. Um, the partial eclipse. So it took a while for the moon to slowly cover up the sun. And just a little bit around after three, about 3.09, uh, the actual total solar eclipse began and I'm going to say that's like the most amazing thing I've seen in a very long time I did see the one seven years ago from Kentucky and I knew this is definitely one I wanted to go to again so uh, we all went out there and got to see it again um, so yeah it's a it's an experience that you definitely would want to see once in your life if you get a chance um, I know here in the United States there's not another one for 20 years so if you're planning on wanting to see one, you're going to be here for a while. It's in 2044, 45, something like that. Um, but the cool thing about so total solar eclipses is that they do happen fairly frequently. They happen every year or two. So on average. However, because the path of the moon is very narrow, the shadow is very narrow. It doesn't, you know, it covers a very small piece of the earth. So you have to travel. So in 2026, there's a one going across Europe. It starts in Greenland, goes down through Iceland, and then all the way across Spain. So if you want to do a little bit of traveling, it's on the western tip of Iceland near Reykjavik. And down by Grindavik, down where the volcano's been erupting for the last couple months. And then down through Spain, it's actually going across Ibiza. So I imagine that's going to be a super big party. Um, by the time it gets across there, the sun's going to be almost setting, so it's going to be very low in the sky, and I imagine some photos would be gorgeous, because then you can get the sun fully eclipsed against some objects or mountains or, you know, whatever, what have you happen to find over there, lakes, water, whatever. So, or natural, you know, whatever you find that would be to make some great pictures, that would be a really fun trip. The eclipse is a lot shorter. It's going to be just over in a, like, it's going to be, so it's going to be about a minute and ten seconds. Um, in some parts of Spain, it's probably up to a couple minutes. Um, the one we saw in Ohio was just shy of four minutes, about three minutes and 56 seconds. So, you know, definitely worth it. And then also in 2020, yeah, that's 2026, 2027, there's another one that's going across Egypt, across some of the sun god temples. And that would be quite the trip to go see that. And that one's over six minutes long. So give you a good chance to get some really good pictures. And then I believe Australia is coming up the year after. Um, so, you know, you can, all of this is, you know, you can find all this, every, you know, there's math equations to figure out the different, you know, spacings for the eclipses and exactly where they will be. So they know, they know these things years and years in advance. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, there's, if you get a chance, go travel, get a cruise or something like that, go see one. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, totally exhausted we had two nights where we stayed up all night our flight out to washington we took the red eye starting at midnight on thursday or friday morning and basically traveled to dc drove all around dc got the rental car drove to pittsburgh and finally got to bed probably around 10 or 11 o'clock at night so i had not slept the entire, you know the entire night before so caught up on that then we did the whole overnight thing to waka Penita, or waka yeah, Wapakoneta, Ohio, um, all night, because we were afraid of the traffic was going to be bad, so not that many people like to drive that late at night, so we left at midnight and got there at 5 in the morning. So the traffic was amazing. It was super easy, plus it was raining, so, you know, again, people don't like to go out in the rain. Um, so a little bit dicey. You had to be careful driving, but, yeah, we did fine. 
So yeah, it was a super cool trip. And yeah, go check out the video I put up. Um, I just posted it a little bit ago and it kind of shows the beginnings of the eclipse. I kind of wish I had had an extra tripod to capture the entire thing. Um, the video camera I had just was not capturing the sun. It wasn't focusing on the sun. So I just kind of pointed it at the crowd so you could hear everybody cheering and just getting the reaction of the people around. It was quite the experience. So a little bit, there's a, a million and a half uh, pictures of the eclipse and videos and stuff online on Facebook and wherever. There's eclipse, total eclipse uh, Facebook groups and I'm sure they're all over Instagram and everywhere else. So, I mean, you can, the pictures don't do it justice until you see it just for real. Um, cameras have a hard time capturing the light properly. So it's just, you know, it's a different type of experience. So seeing it and then actually for life in real life and then actually getting to, you know, see pictures later, they're a little bit different. Um, I have seen a few pictures that were kind of close to what the sun actually looked like to us. And over in Wapakoneta, Ohio, the sun was, a, the, 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 it was a little bit hazy. It wasn't, it wasn't completely clear. There was like high cirrus clouds. Um, over the area at the time. It was just very thin. I mean, I could see everything with my telescope. I could see sunspots and, you know, everything was pretty clear, but it just, it kind of gave a different look to it as the light was shining down through it as the corona popped out. It was kind of a, a glowing bluish white. Uh, I'd, I'll have to find some pictures and see if I can get them up here somewhere else. But um, yeah, it was a little bit different than before. It wasn't quite black and white like the one I saw seven years ago. Because of the clouds and the ice crystals and all that, we you could see just a little bit of extra just glow to it. It's almost just slightly fluorescent. Um, almost like a black light had been turned on, but just very, it, it's hard to explain. So, but yeah, it was a lot of cool. It was really cool. So anyway, I'm um, just touching base, um, saying hi, and, and I'll be doing some more soon. So have a good day everybody